I want to go over the basics of how you have extensionless page names in an ASP.NET web application. By default, you know, ASP.NET web pages have an extension of .aspx. And so here I have a little test website. You can see I just have a little link on it. And this is using um, Visual Studio 2008. It's a standard web application. And all I have on the page is a little hyperlink. So in general, I don't really like having uh, extensions that identify the underlying engine serving the pages. It really doesn't mean much and at some point if you end up changing the technology underneath you don't really want to have to keep the old page extension. So I actually prefer having extensionless page names. So you can see obviously if I take off the .aspx I'm going to get a HTTP error 404 not found. So how do you achieve this? Well you're going to end up having to use some form of re URL rewriting. And in IIS, Microsoft with IIS 7 or above has their own URL rewrite module. There's other rewrite modules as well that are available, and they'll serve the same purpose and do just as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a rule. I'll just add a blank rule, and I'll call it rewrite with .aspx. And what I'm going to do is, you, what you do is you do a regular expression pattern match on the requested URL minus the domain name. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say match from the start of the line. I'm going to create a capture group. And I'm going to say capture anything that is not a dot. And I want one or more characters up until the end of the string. So. In this case, this wouldn't work if you had dots anywhere else in either your page name or your URL path. And if you do have dots other than just on the extension, then what you would have to do is um, come up with a different way with the rewrite rules and different regular expressions to deal with that. But I'm just going to make the assumption that you don't need to do that. I'm going to go ahead and do an internal rewrite. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to back reference the capture, the pattern match, and the way you do that is you say r colon and then this is the group number so in this case I'm uh, with regular expressions anything between the parentheses is a group and this is group number one so I'm saying take the text from the pattern match and basically add dot aspx to it that way when internally IAS will route it to the ASP.NET engine I'm gonna go ahead and click on stop processing of subsequent rules as well so let's go ahead and apply this and you can go back and see now I have this particular rewrite rule configured in my website. Now when I go ahead and refresh the default page without an extension, you can see that now I have my page. So now I've successfully handled an extensionless page. So the other thing you'll notice is from an implementation perspective, what you're going to have to do is all of your hyperlinks, you're going to not put an ASPX extension on your pages. So in this case I have a test.aspx page and you'll notice I'm linking to the David Hasselhoff fan club in here in an iframe. I don't know, I just had to do that. And you'll notice that, like I said, no extension on this page. So when you go back and actually click on the hyperlink, you can see th the rule that I configured handles both the default page and the test page, remaps them, adds on the ASPX extension underneath, but in the browser you do not see the ASPX ext extension, so you have an extensionless page name. So let's go ahead and talk about another issue that will arise, and that is the .aspx page will still work. So I can still add the .aspx extension and that will come through and be served from my website. So in this case you might want to consider that you really don't want these to get you know, hyperlinked out there or what have you. So what you can do is you can add a, another rewrite rule. I'm going to add another one and this one's going to redirect .aspx page requests. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to match anything that ends in, AS, in, in .aspx. And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and capture 
anything up until dot aspx so this is my pattern match and my capture group will be everything on the the page name up until the dot aspx and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and redirect and I want to do a 301 on this so that way it'll be a permanent redirect and I'll redirect to the first capture group name. So what this in essence is doing is it's stripping off the .aspx, doing a 301 redirect back to the browser, and then you're just going to get the everything before the .aspx. So I'll go ahead and apply this rule. I can go back to my little website, and now when I go ahead and refresh this page, you can see what happened is I got redirected back to the extensionless name of the page. So the same thing with my test page. If I go ahead and add uh, ASPX onto it, hit enter, you see I got 301 redirected and I went back to the test page. So this way you're enforcing the fact that the .aspx extension should not be um, served from your site. One thing I wanted to mention about the rewrite rules is even though you configure them in IIS, they're actually stored in your website's web.config file. So if you go ahead and you look at your web.config file for your website and scroll down here, and you'll find a section called um, rewrite. And this is where these rules actually go that you configure in IIS. They're actually thrown into your web.config file. So technically speaking, you could go ahead and if you wanted to copy rules or add rules, you can actually add the XML configuration to your web.config file. And when you do modify your web.config file, when you go back into IIS Manager, all those changes will be reflected in IIS Manager as well. So you have the option of either configuring it in the IIS manager, or you can do the configuration in your web.config file as well. So hopefully this helps. Um, if you have any questions, go to thethoughtfulcoder.com, and I have a post there that will discuss this. And take care.